discuss on jagannath ashtam very famous prayer on lord jagannath we will share that song in the group so everybody can try to read and recite this jagannath ashtam so this jagannath ashtam is originally composed by adi shankracharya so shankracharya ji he composed these prayers in the glorification of lord jagannath so we'll discuss the meaning of this prayer actually um, because when we sing something if you don't understand the meaning of that it's very difficult to relate to that what this prayer really means so we don't feel that emotion that mood in that but when you know the meaning of this prayer or any prayer basically what we sing when you know the meaning of that then it becomes more connected right you feel more connected so we are going to discuss verse by verse maybe line by line the meaning of these prayers So we'll start with invocation prayers. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Gire. यत्पातमहम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंदमाधव श्री चैतन्यश्वर नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधा शिवा सादी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो एवरीबडी नोज लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ हु इज जगन्नाथ एंड एवरीबडी नोज हु इज चैतन्य महाप्रभु राइट एनीबडी आई लाइक टू स्पीक टू मिनट हु इज जगन्नाथ यूनिवर्स प्रभु जी जगत जगत में विश्व यूनिवर्स विश्व के नाथ है वो यस लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ यूनिवर्स दैट इज ट्रू 
But still, who is Jagannath? When we speak of Jagannath, Jagannath is actually Krishna. Yes, Lord Jagannath is Krishna himself. So sometimes people don't understand the different form of the Lord. That or this form is none other than Krishna only. So like Balaji, Tirupati Balaji, right? So Balaji is also Krishna. When we go, when people go to Tirupati, they call Govinda, Govinda. So Govinda, whose name is Govinda? It's Krishna. So they are calling out to Krishna only. The same way Jagannath. Jagannath is also Krishna. He is the Lord of the universe. So Lord Jagannath is not just the Lord of Uriya. He is not the Lord of Pandas only. So he is not Pandanath or Uriyanath. He is Jagannath. He is the Lord of universe. And he is Krishna himself who has transformed into that form his neck has went inside his arms and legs have shrunk in an ecstasy while hearing about his own brajalila while hearing about his own pastimes with the cowherd boys with the gopis so in ecstasy his form has transformed into the form of lord jagannath i remember many many years back uh, maybe it's a it's an incident from 2009 maybe <clears throat> i was telling one of my colleague in office that there is a Michigan Rathi Yatra happening. So I was kind of inviting the colleagues to come to Rathi Yatra. And that person happens to be from a different state in India. And I am from Punjab. So he told me, you are from Punjab. And how come you are worshipping Jagannath? He is from Odisha. So that is the kind of a very limited intelligence people have for what we call as a limited vision people have, very narrow-minded vision they have. They think God is limited to different, different parts. For different part of the world, he is a different God. God is one. He is the Lord of the universe. So this Jagannath Ashtakam is in the glorification of Lord Jagannath. So Adi Shankaracharya, he composed these prayers and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was residing in Jagannath Puri, so, you know, the last 18 years of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life is Leela. He spent all his time in Jagannath Puri. He will visit Jagannath Temple. He will be standing at Garuda Stamba. He will not even go closer to the altar. He will stand at Garuda Stamba and standing there, he will be singing the glorification of Lord Jagannath. Because who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also Krishna, but in the mood of Radharani. Why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come to this world? To give Yoga Dharma. That was one of the external reasons. But internal reason is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to taste the mood of Radharani. Why Radharani has so much love for Krishna? What she feels in association of Krishna. So he came to experience that. So that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he is in the mood of Radharani. That's why he is standing in front of Jagannath and singing the glory of Jagannath. So in one way, Radharani is singing the glory of Krishna. So the meaning of these Jagannath Ashtakam, we are going to discuss what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was experiencing or what he was feeling when he's reciting these prayers. So first, let's offer our prayers to Lord Jagannath Baladev Subhadramai. नीलाचल निवासाय नित्याय परमात्मने बलबद्र सुभद्राभ्याम जगन्नाथाय ते नमः नीलाचल निवासाय नित्याय परमात्मने बलबद्र सुभद्राभ्याम जगन्नाथाय ते नमः नीलाचल निवासाय परमात्मने बलबद्र सुभद्राभ्याम जगन्नाथाय ते नमः देव देव जगन्नाथ प्रपन्नार्ते विनाशना त्राहिमाम पुंडरे काक्ष पतितम भव सागरे नमस्ते तु हल ग्राम नमस्ते मुसलायुध Namaste Revati Kanta, Namaste Bhakta Vatsala, Namaste to Bhakti Dhatri, Prasida Prameshwari, 
जय देवी सुभद्रे भद्रदायिनी जय जगन्नाथ जय बलदेव जय माई सुभद्रा सो द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ दिस जगन्नाथ अष्टम विच वी सैन दिस इज चैतन्य महाप्रभु स्टैंडिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ सो जस्ट Visualize in that way, in front of you, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is standing in front of Jagannath, and he is singing these glorifications. So the first verse, because Radha Rani is speaking to Krishna, what is she saying? Where does Krishna live? So originally, Krishna used to live in Vrindavan, and from Vrindavan, Krishna left to go to Mathura, and from Mathura he went to Dwarka, and never returned back to Vrindavan. So when Akuruji ji came to take Krishna and Balram to Mathura. at that time all the gopis they tried to stop krishna from going to mathura and what did krishna tell everybody he tell all the brajabasis his mother father everybody he told don't worry i will return in one day right i am just going for one day and i will return very soon but krishna never came back in one sense it's in scripture it says Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Krishna does not even take one step out of Vrindavan. Yes, that is true. Krishna does not leave Vrindavan. Even if Krishna in his leela is going out of Vrindavan, he went to Mathura or Dwarka. What does it mean that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan? Because in the heart of Krishna, he is always thinking of Vrindavan. He is always thinking of his Madhurya leela in Vrindavan. So that's why. He is always in Vrindavan, right? For example, when we say we should live in the holy dham, right? That is one of the ang of bhakti that we should reside in the holy dham. So, what does it mean to reside in holy dham? That should we leave our home, our work, everything, and go live in Vrindavan, live in Ayodhya, live in Jagannathpuri? It may not be physically possible, but it means is we should in our heart always. be remembering krishna we should always stay connected with krishna in that way we live in the holy dham when we are always remembering krishna by chanting his holy name when we are remembering krishna by hearing bhagavatam by hearing ramakatha so in that way we are always remembering krishna and we are residing in the holy dham so krishna was living in vrindavan but he left so chaitanya mahaprabhu is talking about that part in the first verse what does he say कदाचित कालिंदी तटा विपिन संगीत करवो सो ही यूज टू लिव यू यूज टू लिव ही इज टेलिंग जगन्नाथ यू यूज टू लिव एट द बैंक्स ऑफ यमुना कदाचित कालिंदी तटा एट वन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम राइट एट सम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू आर लिविंग एट द शोर्स ऑफ कालिंदी सो हु इज कालिंदी Yamuna and why Yamuna is known as Kalindi because she descended from Kalinda mountain. So that is one reason Yamuna is known as Kalindi. And another reason is Yamuna's water is also has becoming has become blackish by the touch of this black boy. So they say one this black boy he touched the water of Yamuna and Yamuna became black. So that is Kalindi. and another meaning of kalindi is actually one who can remove the sinful influence of kali yuga that is also known as kalindi so yamuna can also remove the influence of kali yuga so krishna used to live at the banks of river yamuna and what he used to do vipina sangeeta kravo so he used to do play some music what kind of music krishna is playing is he playing some harmonium some classical music hindustani music what does krishna play krishna plays flute and by playing the flute krishna attracts the heart of everybody like krishna is playing flute in also different melodies when he is playing the flute to attract all the gopis then his melody is different when he is playing the flute to call all the cows back to go back to vrindavan then he is playing a different melody only cows can understand that when he playing from gopis only gopis can understand that when he is playing with his cowherd boyfriends then he is playing a melody in a different way it is meant for them to please them so krishna plays the flute also in different ways 
you know, when Krishna and Balram, and along with all the cowherd boys, they go to herd the cows. And how many cows Krishna has? Krishna is having, Nanda Maharaj has 9 lakh cows. And they go to herd all those cows. In the evening, now Krishna has to bring all the cows back. Cows have gone in the forest in different, different parts. And Krishna in Tera Kadamba, there is a place in Vrindavan called Tera Kadamba. So Krishna climbs upon a Kadamba tree and he calls out to the cows. So he calls out the cows with their different, different names. Hey, Shamali, hey, Pili, hey. So with the different, different names, Krishna is calling out because he's calling out loudly to all these cows to call out loud, to speak out loud is called Ter. And he's climbing up on a Kadamba tree. That's why that tree, that place became to known as Ter Kadamba. So Krishna plays on his flute and attracts everybody. So he's playing on his flute. Mudabhiri Nari Vadana, Kamala Swada Madhupa. So Krishna plays his flute and he attracts all the gopis also. And all the gopis, when they come there, what does Krishna do? He is looking at their beautiful faces and Krishna is drinking the nectar from their faces like a bumblebee. Like a bumblebee goes to different flowers and the bumblebee drinks the nectar out of the flowers. Krishna, after playing the flute, he invites all the damsels of Praja to come there and he is standing there and drinking the nectar from their faces. Now, what does it really mean that Krishna is drinking the nectar of their faces? Is it like some sort of a mundane discussion, a boy looking at some girls or kissing them or something? So it's not a mundane affair or it's not like a what we call as a istri lampat. Somebody is doing some leelas or some talking with the girls or some watching the girls. In the next line, that's why what is described here? Rama, Shambhu, Brahma, Amarapati, Ganesha, Charita, Pado. He is not an ordinary person. He is being worshipped by all these great, great personalities. Who are these? Rama, Lakshmi Devi, Shambhu, Lord Shiva, Brahma, Brahma Ji, Amarapati, Indra, right? Amarapati, who is the Lord of Amarapati, the heaven. Ganesha, so Lord Ganesha. So all these great, great personality, Lakshmi Ji, Lord Shiva, Brahma, Indra, Ganesh, they all are worshipping your lotus feet. So it's not an ordinary person. He is the Lord of everybody. Jagannatha Swami, Nayana Pathgami, Bhavatume. May that Lord Jagannath be always on the path of my vision. Nayana Pathgami. May Lord Jagannath always stay on the path of my vision. So what does it really mean? May Lord Jagannath be always be on the path of my vision. It means... May you become the object of my vision. Wherever my vision goes, may I always see you everywhere. Wherever I see, may I can see you, oh Lord Jagannath, everywhere. So Jagannath Swami, Nayana Pathagami, Bhavatume. I pay always senses to Lord Jagannath. May that Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. So that is the first verse of this Jagannath Ashram, describing that Jagannath is none other than Krishna who was living in Vrindavan at the banks of Yamuna and he used to do all sort of pastime. Now the second verse, what does the second verse say? Now when we say somebody is living at a particular place, you tell somebody, oh, you want to meet that person, you can go meet that person at this place. So after telling where to find that person, then you give the description of that person. How does that person look like? Right? So if uh, you want to go to the airport, okay, you go to pick Stish Prabhu at the airport. So he, you will find him at the airport and then you tell him how does he look like if you have not seen him, if you have not heard about him. So that's why the second verse of 
Jagannath Ashram is describing the form of Krishna. How does he look like? So in the second verse it says, Bhuje Swaye Venum Shirasi Shikhi Pucham Kati Kate Tate So Bhuje Swaye Venum In his left hand he is holding a flute. So Krishna holding a flute in his left hand and Shirasi Shikhi Pucham on his forehead, on his head he is putting a peacock feather. So Shirasi means the head. Now Shikhi Shikhi Pucham it refers to the peacock. So in Sanskrit Pucham means the tail, right? The back part. So the back part of the peacock is the peacock feather. So Krishna wears a peacock feather on his head and he is holding a flute in his hand. Dukulam netrante sahachara kataksham vididhate. So Dukulam he is wearing yellowish garment. So Krishna's dress is described always as Krishna is wearing a yellow garment. Right? And it's not just a yellow garment, it says molten yellow. The, the color of Krishna's cloth is not just as a bright yellow, it's like a molten yellow, golden type of color. And why does Krishna wear golden color? Even though Krishna may be wearing many different colors also, but he always wear something golden color. Sometimes the waist band, waist cloth also. Right? Krishna's dhoti may be of a different color, but he will always wear a waist cloth which is yellow. So some, something he will have yellow garment. And why does Krishna wear yellow garment? Because Krishna's cloth color is not just yellow, it's molten yellow. Tapta Kanchana. And who else has a color of Tapta Kanchana? Right? Like a molten gold. Radharani. So because Krishna always remembers Radharani in his remembrance to continuously remember Radharani, Krishna is wearing the cloth also of the color of Radharani, which is molten yellow, molten gold. So Dukulam Netrante Sahachara. So in his hand he wear, he holds a flute. On his head he wears a peacock feather. On his hip he wears fine yellow silken cloth. And Netrante Sahachara Kataksham Vididhate. From the side glances of his eyes, he is looking at the loving devotees. So from the side glances, he is always looking here and there at the devotees, specifically talking about here the gopis. And there is a famous pastime in the morning when Krishna is getting ready to go to the forest to herd the cows. All the gopis, they come outside of Nanda Maharaj's palace because they are very eager to see Krishna and they are thinking that Krishna will go in the morning to the forest and then he will return in the evening. And how will we sustain our lives without Krishna all day long? So at least in the morning, they want to see Krishna and they want to know which direction Krishna will go. Krishna goes to different, different directions every morning. To hurt the cow. He doesn't go in the same direction every time. So they want to know which direction Krishna will go. So they, some of the gopis also follow by different means. Sometimes they go on the pretext of selling their milk, yogurt, butter. So they want to go in that direction. And they are singing about because they are remembering Krishna even though they want to say Dood Lelo, Makhan Lelo. They are calling about Govind Lelo, Madhav Lelo. If they're so absorbed in Krishna, they're just calling out to Krishna. So Krishna is indicating them by his side glances that today I will go to this direction. Or he has a different way of communicating also. That's why in uh, Bhagavatam also, there is a, another very famous word which we recite, which talk about how does Krishna look like? How is Krishna's form? So in that verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Varaha pidam natavara vapu karanayo karanikaram vibhradavasa kanaka kapisham vejantim chamala randran venu radhara sudhaya purvena gopavrindai 
वृंदारण्यम स्वपदारमनम प्रविशाद गीत कीर्ति so this verse also describes the beauty of krishna the form of krishna how does krishna look like varaha peedam natavar babu he wears a peacock feather on his head so any description you see about krishna you can read about krishna it will have these things for sure he holds a flute in his hand he wears a peacock feather he wears a yellowish cloth golden clothes so these three things will be there for sure so here also it says varaha peedam he wears a peacock feather natavara babu when krishna walks how does his body looks like how does his body appear it appears to be like a very wonderful dancer natavara babu his body is like of a very wonderful dancer because krishna is a amazing dancer and nobody can be better than krishna in dancing we know Lord Shiva is known as Nataraj, right? Nataraj, Raj, Namo, Namo. Lord Shiva dances on Kailash, and he does Tandav Nitya. So Lord Shiva is dancing on a mountain which is stable, Achal. But Krishna, he is dancing on the hoods of Kaliya, and Kaliya's hoods are not stable. Kaliya's hoods are moving. Sometimes his one head moves up, another head moves up. so sometimes krishna is dancing and he is jumping from one head to another head so krishna stage is not stable stage it's a moving stage and even lord shiva when he sees the dancing of krishna he becomes very attracted by the dance of krishna so shiva is known as nataraj and krishna is known as nataraj raj so nataraj papu that is address for krishna he is a very wonderful dancer karanayo karanikaram so karanayo karanayo means two years karanikaram in his two years he wears one flower which is a bluish color flower now years are two but flower is one why because it is one flower sometime krishna puts it on his left ear sometime he puts on the right ear and that's a indicating flower that's krishna's instrument to indicate to the gopis one the kabbo bhi maar padega i'm going to go so if he is going to go side he puts the, he takes that flower and puts on the left ear gopis will understand okay today krishna is going to that direction and sometimes he will take that flower and put on the right ear indicating i'm going to go to this direction because krishna is also not telling directly or looking directly gopis face to face out of shyness because balram ji is there yashoda maiya is there so krishna is giving a indication indirectly so karanayo karanikaram he wears a very beautiful bluish flower on his ear vibhradvasa kanaka kapisham so he is wearing the golden clothes vajantim chamala and his neck he is wearing a uh, garland of forest flowers vajanti mala randran venur adhara sudhaya he is holding the flute to his lips and blowing the nectar from his mouth into that flute pru purena gopavrindai and he is always surrounded by all the cowherd boys in that way krishna enters into the forest of vrindavan vrindavan aranyam swapad ramanam by walking on his foot so krishna is walking on foot in the dust of vrindavan because krishna's feet has many different symbols right on the under the feet of krishna there are so many different symbols shank chakra pada gadam and a fish a water pot and so many other symbols are there so the dust of vrindavan is decorated with all the footprints of krishna which is having all these different marks so vrindaranyam swapadaramanam pravishad geeta kirti geeta kirti and all the cowherd boys are singing the glories of krishna so in that way krishna enters into the forest of vrindavan so the same way in jagannath ashtakam also second verse is bhuje swaye venum shirasi shikhi pucham kati tate dukulam netrante sahachara kataksham vididhate krishna holds a flute in the left hand he is uh, wearing a peacock feather on his head he is 
wearing the yellow clothes and through his side glances he is looking at all his beloved devotees sada shrimad vrindavana vasati leela parichayo and in that way living in vrindavan he is always performing his wonderful pastimes the third verse so jagannath swami nayana pathagami bhava tumhe may that lord jagannath be the object of my vision moving on to the third verse mahambhodaye sa tire kanakaruchire nila shikhare so now chaitanya mahaprabhu comes back to jagannath puri first two verses he has gone to vrindavan he is describing how jagannath same jagannath as krishna was living in vrindavan and how does he look like now he comes back to jagannath puri now that you have come to jagannath you have resided in jagannath puri so mahambhodesa tire now you are residing at the mahasagar this ocean at the shore of this ocean kanaka ruchire in a gold palace neela shikhare on nilachal so on nilachal neela mountain in a golden palace you are residing at the shore of this ocean वसना प्रसादंत सहज बलभद्रेन बलिना सो इन योर पैलेस पैलेस मींस द जगन्नाथ पुरी टेंपल व्हिच इज लाइक द पैलेस ऑफ लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ इन दैट पैलेस जगन्नाथ इज रिजाइडिंग विद हूम सहज बलभद्रेन बलिना विद योर एल्डर पावरफुल ब्रदर बलभद्र बलराम जी सुभद्र मध्यस्थ and keeping subhadra devi your sister subhadra in the middle so on one side there is jagannath other side there is balram ji in the middle there is subhadra so you are residing in puri on the nilachal in golden palace along with your brother balbhadra and subhadra why you have come here why you have moved from vrindavan to jagannath puri sakala sur seva saradu So you have come to give the opportunity of service to all the suras. Suras means all the demi gods. Because in Vrindavan, in Vrindavan, Krishna is in which rasa? Krishna is in Mathura rasa. In Vrindavan, Krishna is just playing with the gopas. He is having the lila, Mathura lila with the gopis. But there is no opportunity for the devatas to offer worship to Krishna. even though many demigods they came and they glorified krishna but krishna is in a different mood ai right? brahma ji after the brahma bi mohan leela when brahma had stolen all the cows and the gopas and one year later when brahma ji returned everything at that time brahma is offering the obeisances to krishna and he is glorifying krishna he is speaking so many verses in glorification of krishna but krishna did not even speak one single word I Krishna is thinking, who is this four-headed person? Why he is speaking all this to me? Let him go quickly, and I want to play with all the gopas. So he didn't even utter a word. When Indra came, Indra, the after Kuvarthan Lila, at that time Krishna at least spoke. Right when Indra prayed to Krishna and he brought Surbhi Kau, did the Abhishek of Krishna, but for Brahma he even didn't spoke. so all these jamming gods they don't get the opportunity to worship krishna to glorify krishna in vrindavan or at least krishna does not reciprocate with them here krishna has moved as jagannath to give the opportunity of service to everybody give the opportunity of worship to everybody now here in jagannath puri jagannath does two things he is listening to all the glorification all the players of the de- of, of the prayers of the devotees and he is eating so sometime in the other language it's khana bachi khana bachi so he is eating and he is just listening everybody comes and they speak the glorification of the lord in dwarika krishna is in the aishwarya bhav dwarika everybody is serving krishna in the mood of aishwarya in vrindavan krishna is in madhurya bhav he does madhurya leela and in 
Vrindavan, Krishna is in Udarya Bhav. He is showering mercy. Oh, sorry, in uh, Vrindavan, I said already, in the mood of Madhurya Bhav. And also as a Udarya Bhav, also on the devotees, he is showering his mercy. In Jagannath Puri, Jagannath is having all the results. Right? Because he is same Dwarika Vasi. In Dwarika, he was in Ashwarya Bhav. In Vrindavan, he is in Madhurya Bhav. And in Jagannath Puri, he is showering the mercy on everybody. So, primary rasa is Odarya. That's why here he says, Sakala Sura Seva Avasarado. So you have moved to Jagannath Puri. Here you are giving the opportunity to all the Suras to do some service. Jagannath Swami Nayana Pathagami Bhavatumhe. I offer my obeisances to Jagannath. May that Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. So in, in Jagannath Puri, we know, right, we heard that past time, we talked about that past time, that the Jagannath temple does not close for a long time. One of the boon which Indra Jumna Maharaj asked of Jagannath was that you please Take rest only for very short time. You keep giving darshan to everybody. So Jagannath temple has no fixed timing of closing. And if it closes also, it's only for 2-3 hours when Lord Jagannath take rest for some time. And even when the temple closes, at that time, the Devi Devatas, they come to worship the Lord. So there is a very well-known pastime actually in Jagannath Puri. Once one Pujari Right, when Mahapatre, he was returning home after closing the altar. Uh, he was returning back to take rest. And at that time, he was he saw a very big shadow behind him. And as he saw that shadow, he turned back. He was kind of afraid that who is that giant person who is walking behind him. And as he turned back, he saw a huge person and he called, who are you? He said, I am Bhavishan. Vision from the time of Lord Ram. And I have come here to worship Jagannath. I come here often to worship Lord Jagannath. So the Devi Devatas, all these great personalities, they come to offer their worship to Jagannath. And the Pujari, he told that you are Bhavishan, please give me some souvenir so I can uh, show it to others that even the demigods, they come here to worship the Supreme Lord. So Bhavishan at that time, he took out one bracelet from his hand and he gave to that Pujari. And, and the Pujari hold on to that bracelet. From his size, the bracelet is so huge. And this bracelet is like the wheel of the chariot from our size. And that bracelet is still there actually. Um, even I did not see that. I did not know about this earlier. So they say this bracelet is still there in Jagannath Puri in the temple and they can show that bracelet is given by Bhavishan to this Mahapatre. So the demigods, they come to offer the prayers to the Lord. May that Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. Now the fourth verse, Kripah Paravara Sajala Jalada Shreni Ruchiro. Lord Jagannath is the ocean of mercy. Kripa Paravaro. And how does he appear? Sajala Jalada Shreni Ruchiro. He appears like a rain cloud. Rain cloud has a blackish, bluish complexion. The cloud which is filled with the water, which is just going to shower rain. Krishna appears like that rain cloud. So when we talk about Krishna's color complexion, it's not just pure black or it's not pure blue. It's blackish, bluish complexion like that of a rain cloud. So that rain cloud, also not just single rain cloud. Sajala Jalada Shreni. He appears like a row of rain clouds. So that's why Krishna, when Krishna is in front of everybody, especially the peacocks, right? The peacocks dance. As soon as they see Krishna, the peacocks start dancing. Generally, peacock dance when it's about to rain. When they see that rain cloud, 
the peacocks start dancing they open up all their feathers and they start dancing nicely so here when they see krishna coming and to them krishna appears like a rain cloud and they think a rain cloud is coming towards us and the, they start dancing next to see and they also want to gift something to krishna now peacock what do they have to give to krishna they have their beautiful feathers so they have a feather that we offer our feather to you as a gift the peacocks are also instructing us in one way that we should always offer something to krishna and even the peacocks a bird is offering something to the lord so we also always should offer something to krishna uh, either we are when we go to the temple we are done offering something to krishna or whatever we can in terms of offering is many devotees they go to the temple they make sure they take something for krishna or put something in the holy or at least here in the temples we have a system of a monthly donation program that in a if you are not carrying any cash on a weekly basis when you go you have signed up for something as a monthly donation program so something we should be offering to the lord even the bird is teaching us so kripa paravara you are the ocean of mercy you appear like the rain cloud rama vani rama supra amala pankhe rukha mukha so how does lord appear he is the storehouse of bliss for lakshmi and saraswati even lakshmi devi and saraswati they are serving you and how do they serve how does the lakshmi devi and saraswati devi serve the lord by helping the devotees in different way lakshmi devi is giving wealth to the devotees by which they can serve the lord saraswati devi is giving giving that intelligence to the devotees by that intelligence they can glorify the lord they can serve the lord so even though lakshmi devi and saraswati devi are also serving the devotees in that way they are serving the lord so he is a storehouse of bliss for lakshmi and saraswati and how does the lord's beautiful face resembles his face resembles a spotless full blown lotus supra amala pankaruka mukha so your face appears like a full blown lotus everywhere we see we talk about krishna's different limbs in form of lotus flower like right? krishna's feet are like a lotus flower krishna's face is like a lotus flower krishna's eyes are like a lotus flower even kunti devi she prays right when she prays to krishna what does she pray she also is praying in that way that i offer my obeisances to the navel lotus like navel who has a lotus navel namaste to so what is that exact words okay some of the exact word is not coming in my mind so she pankajan pankajan karu ya yeah, namaste pankajan karaya namaste pankaj malini who is wearing that lotus garland so she prays in that way so this verse further says surandre aradhya shruti gana shikha geeta charito all the demigods they are glorifying the supreme lord in many different verses all the scriptures all the shruti they are glorifying the supreme lord jagannath swami nayana pathagami bhavatu me i offer my obeisances to lord jagannath may lord jagannath be the object of my vision so krishna is giving mercy to everybody he is ocean of mercy he is giving mercy through his devotees right how does krishna gives mercy how does the lord give mercy he gives the mercy through his devotees some we should not be thinking that oh when krishna will come directly and he will shower his mercy on me krishna showers his mercy through the medium of his devotee through the medium of guru sadhu shastra that's why in the morning we sing this prayer 
the the Mangalarati prayer. Sansara dava nalali dhaloka. Pranne karunya ghana ghanatvam. So this material world is like a forest fire. Everybody is burning in this forest fire. But the spiritual master is like the rain cloud and he showers his mercy. When he showers his mercy in the form of that rain, then that misery of material existence can pacify. So Krishna showers his mercy through the medium of the spiritual master, through the medium of the devotees. And Saraswati and Lakshmi are serving the devotees as a service to the Supreme Lord. And what does Jagannath do in Jagannath Puri? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu goes to this now famous pastime. He moved to the next verse. Ratha Rudo Gachan Pati Milita Bhudeva Patale. So Jagannath rides on his chariot, moves along the road on his Rathyatra card. And every step, there are so many devotees who have assembled there. And he is being worshipped by all this Bhudeva. So how, who is referred here as Bhudeva? It's referring to the Brahmanas. But not just like a Brahmanas who are born in a Brahmana family. We refer them as a Brahmana. Here somebody who is having the qualities of a Brahmana. And he is worshipable. Bhudeva. Bhu means dharti, earth. And Deva means somebody who is being worshipped. So who is worshipable on this earth? The devotees who carry all the good qualities. See, even the Brahmanas, the Brahmanas are somebody who is having these qualities of uh, cleanliness, truthfulness, austerity, and then Patan Patan, Yajan Jajan. So, all these qualities, so Brahmanas are considered to have at least those 12 qualities which are listed in Bhagavad Gita also. Lord Krishna says Brahmanas have these qualities. But the devotees, they carry 26 qualities. In the scripture, it lists the 26 qualities of a Vaishnava, of a devotee. So the devotee has all those qualities which the Brahmanas have. So Bhudeva not just refers to just the Brahmanas, but in general as devotees. So Jagannath rides on his chariot and he goes into this parade on the roads where all the devotees have assembled and Lord Jagannath is being glorified by all these devotees. All these devotees are offering their wonderful prayers. Ratha Rudo Gachan Pratimilita Bhudeva Patalehe Stuti Pradubhavam Pratipadam Upkaranya Sadhya So all these devotees are singing his glories at every step. And Jagannath is hearing all this glorification. So Jagannath is not fed up with hearing the glorification. He is continuously hearing all that glorification. And sometimes what happens is because the chariot is moving and the wheels of the chariot, they make a lot of noise. Right? When the chariot moves, the wheels make a lot of noise. So what does Jagannath do? He makes that chariot stop. Jagannath says, I want to hear what my devotee is telling me. What my devotee is offering as prayers. I want to hear that very clearly and carefully. So he make his chariot stop. And there are so many incidents, so many instances, so many pastimes where the chariot stops for hours. And sometimes for days also, the chariot does not move. No matter how much they try externally to move that chariot, but the chariot does not move. So there is no technical problem actually in the chariot that some problem has come in the chariot, it's not moving. It's not a technical problem. It's a sentiment problem, emotional problem. Jagannath wants to hear the sentiments, the emotions of the devotees. So he make his chariot stop there. Even in the past time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, once the chariot had stopped for so long, Maharaj Pratap Rudra, he brought his elephants and the elephants are trying to pull the chariot. Still the chariot does not move. And then finally, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he goes behind the chariot and he pushes the chariot with his forehead. Then finally, Jagannath allows the chariot to move. And uh, there is another very famous pastime. Uh, 
in uh, Jagannath Puri, there's a very well-known incident instance, and uh, uh, this devotee is Salabeg. Is Salabeg? He was born in a Muslim family. Salabeg's father was Lalabeg, and he was working for the Muslim ruler. And he married a Brahman widow. And he once he saw this Brahman widow, and he was attracted towards her. He married her, and through them was born this child who was named as Salabeg. Because his wife was a Vaishnavi, a Brahman in the in earlier, and she was always remembering Jagannath. She was always serving Jagannath. So from the childhood, this Salabeg was also attracted towards Jagannath. Even though now because he is associated with the Muslim family, his father is Muslim, he is not allowed entry into Jagannath temple. Right, the non-Hindus they cannot enter inside Jagannath temple. That's why that is another Jagannath's mercy. He comes out of his temple. He rides on his chariot to give darshan to everybody. So this Salabeg, he will come every time. He will attend this Rathyatra festival because this is the time when he can take darshan of his Lord and offer his heartfelt prayers. So one time uh, Salabeg had gone to Vrindavan, and he had gone thinking that by the time of Rathyatra, I will return back and then I will participate in this Rathyatra festival. But when he was gone to Vrindavan. Uh, it took little longer time there because at that time the Mughals, the or Aurangzeb and his army, they were destroying. They were causing so many problems in Vrindavan, destroying many temples. Uh, so the travel was also not that easy. It took little longer for him, and it was the time of Rathyatra. It was the day of Rathyatra. Now he is out of Jagannath Puri, and he is remembering. Oh, today is Rathyatra. My Lord Jagannath is coming out of his temple. And I am not there. I will not be able to take darshan. So he's praying in his heart to Jagannath, my dear Lord, just wait for me. I'm coming quickly. I want to take your darshan. I want to offer my prayers. So I want to see you riding the, your chariot. So please wait for me. And Jagannath, hearing the sincere prayers of his devotee, he stopped his chariot. So for many days that time, the chariot was stopped there. It's not moving. And when Salavek reached back Jagannath Puri, he took darshan of Lord Jagannath and then finally the chariot moved. So it's a very famous pastime there in Jagannath Puri. Now also the Salabeg Samadhi is there on that uh, grand path, right? Baradanda, that is the main road in Jagannath Puri. So his Samadhi is still there on that road. And Jagannath chariot, it is said that it stops there. So, what does Jagannath do? He rides his chariot. He is hearing all the glorification. He is very eager to hear the glorification. He pays full attention. He is not in a rush that, okay, enough of the devotees have glorified. Now, rest of the glorification I will hear in the next year. He is hearing everybody's prayers, everybody's glorification. He is Daya Sindhu. Daya Sindhu Pandhu Sakala Jagata. And he is the bandhu of the whole universe. Right? He is the ocean of mercy. And he is the friend of the whole world. That's why his name is Jagannath. He is the master of the universe. Not the master of one particular state or one particular class of people. Bandhu Sakala Jagata. Sindhu Sutaya Jagannath Swami Nayana Patagami Bhava Tumhe. So in this verse, when... This verse was composed. Now, Shankaracharya is not just saying only Jagannath. He is saying along with the Sindhu Sutaya. Who is Sindhu Sutaya? The daughter of the ocean, Lakshmi Devi. So along with the daughter of ocean, Lakshmi Devi, I offer my obeisances to Jagannath. May that Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. So again, Jagannath is none other than Krishna. He is none other than Lord Vishnu. Right? Some people who are attracted to the form of the Lord as Lakshmi Narayan, they may worship Jagannath as Vishnu. And the devotees here in Gaudiya Sampradaya, we worship Jagannath as Krishna because he is none other than Krishna. So he can be referred in both ways. Here, Adi Shankaracharya is saying, along with the Lakshmi Devi, I offer my obeisances to the Jagannath. May that Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. The next verse, 
पारब्रह्म पीड़ा कुवलया तलोत्फुला नायनो लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ हुज आईज रिजेंबल फुल ब्लोन लोटस पेटल दे आई मेंशन अर्लियर राइट वी रेफर टू एवरी लिम ऑफ लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ एज लोटस वी रेफर टू एवरी लिम ऑफ कृष्णा एज अ लोटस फ्लावर हिज आईज आर लाइक अ लोटस फीट आर लाइक अ लोटस सो हियर आल्सो नाउ ही सेज द आईज represent a full blown lotus petal and he is the ornament on lord brahma's head para brahma pira so he is the supreme personality of god head and his feet are on the head of brahma he is a ornament for lord brahma on lord brahma's head and he resides on nilachal hill nivasi niladro nihita निहित चरण अनंत सिरसी एंड हिज फीट आर प्लेस ऑन द हेड ऑफ अनंत शेष निवासी नीलाध्रो इज रिजाइड ऑन द नीलाचल माउंटेन हिज फीट आर रेस्टिंग ऑन द अनंत शेष एंड ही इज ऑलवेज इन द एक्सटेसी ही इज ओवरवेम्ड बाय द लव ऑफ राधा रानी रसानंदु राधा सर्व बपुर आलिंगन सुखो so he is embracing the body of shrimati radha rani and in that way he is enjoying her that melody radha rani's body appears like a cool pond and krishna embracing the body of radha rani he is overwhelmed by, by the mellow of love jagannath swami nayana path gami bhava tumhe i offer my obeisances to lord jagannath may lord jagannath be the object of my vision so up to these six prayers these are glorification of lord jagannath right describing the different activities different pastime of lord jagannath now the next two verses are what we are asking from jagannath may lord jagannath may give me this so what do you want to ask from jagannath so that is what shankaracharya has composed and that's what chaitanya mahaprabhu is singing what should be the mood of devotee what are we asking from jagannath are we asking him for a uh, good birth are we asking for some wealth some position association of beautiful woman what are we asking from jagannath so it is navai yachi rajyam i do not pray for kingdom i don't want a big kingdom or lot of wealth na cha kanaka manikya vaibham i don't want all of these opulences i don't want gold i don't want rubies pearls na yache aham ramyam sakala janah kamyam varavadhu i do not ask for beautiful wife which is desired by all men varavadhu so every generally people of this world they are men are looking for a beautiful wife women are looking for a good husband so the prayer is i am not looking for any of this worldly relationship i am not looking for beautiful association of beautiful men or women i am not looking for big house or gold or rubies or any other wealth sada kale kale pramath pati na gita charito i simply pray that lord jagannath whose glory is lord shiva always sing may that lord jagannath be the object of my vision so sada kale kale pramatha patina geeta charito as lord shiva is always glorifying the lord may that lord jagannath be the object of my vision i do not want anything else so sometime when we hear these prayers we may think but i have that desire still in my heart i am still having those material desire looking for this or that even though there are material desires but we should ask from the lord please remove these desires i don't want this i don't want that because at least if we start praying in that way lord will remove those tendencies those wrong desires from the heart right we are calling for the help of the lord so when we call for the help of the lord at least the lord will say okay i know you have all these desire in your heart but i will remove all these desires so lord will purify our heart as chaitanya mahaprabhu also in shikshashtakam what does chaitanya mahaprabhu say in shikshashtakam the fourth verse of shikshashtakam 
न धनम न जनम न सुंदरी कविताम व जगदीश काम मम जन्मनी जन्मनी ईश्वरो भवताद भक्ति रहे तुकी तुकी। लाइफ आफ्टर लाइफ आई ओनली ओनली डिजायर योर अहेतु की भक्ति आई डोंट हैव एनी अदर डिजायर न जनम आई डोंट वॉन्ट बर्थ इन हाई क्लास फैमिली न धनम आई डोंट वॉन्ट वेल्थ न धनम न जनम न सुंदरी आई डोंट वॉन्ट द एसोसिएशन ऑफ ब्यूटिफुल वुमेन कविताम वाई डोंट वॉन्ट एनी फॉलोअर्स एनी नेम एंड पेम All I want is life after life. Please engage me in your loving devotional service without any motive. A hate to be. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also composed that in Chitrashtika. And here in Jagannath Ashtika also, it's on a very similar note. Very similar lines are mentioned here. Na vai yache rajyam, na cha kana ka mani kya bhavam, na yache aham ramyam sakala jana kamyam varavadhu. सदा काले काले प्रमाथ पति न गीता चरितो जगन्नाथ स्वामी नयन पथ गामी भव तुम है मे दट लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ बी द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ माई विजन एंड इन द एथ वर्ड्स ऑल्सो कंटिन्यूस विथ हाउ वी शुड बी प्रेइंग टू द लॉर्ड हर तव संसारम ध्रुत तरम अश्रम सुरपते ओ द लॉर्ड ऑफ डेमी गॉड सुरपते ओ द लॉर्ड ऑफ डेमी गॉड्स Please quickly remove this useless material existence which I am going through. Haratvam samsara drutataram. Please remove this material existence. Right now I am going in this material world from one life form into another life form, going through this 8.4 million species of life. Please cut down that cycle of birth and death. Please remove this material existence. Haratvam paapanam. अपरम यादव पते ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ द यदुज प्लीज रिमूव दिस वास्ट शोरलेस ओशन ऑफ सिंस द डिवोटी इज नॉट जस्ट से प्लीज रिमूव द रिएक्शन ऑफ द सिंस बट वी वॉन्ट टू प्रेस प्लीज रिमूव दिस सिंपुल टेंडेंसी फ्रॉम माई हार्ट द टेंडेंसी टू कमिट सिंस प्लीज रिमूव दैट टेंडेंसी इन माई हार्ट there is so much tendency to commit sin it's like the ocean of sins now please remove that tendency because we don't want to be like the elephant taking bath in the river elephant goes to take bath in the river comes out again put dust on his body again he goes take bath so people go to the different holy places to take bath in different holy rivers and they want to remove their sinful reaction but A devotee desires is not just removing sinful reaction, but cleansing the heart from all the sinful tendencies. Even the great great personalities, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, "I am such a sinful person. My heart is filled with all the sins. I am such a sinful person that I become happy by seeing somebody miserable, and I am miserable by seeing somebody happy. But now, is Bhakti Vinod Thakur really?" Sinful, he is such a elevated Vaishnava, but he is saying I am such a sinful person. Why? Why somebody of that great personalities, somebody such elevated person, will refer himself as a sinful person? Because their definition of sin is different, right? Our definition of sin is different. We may think some big thing as sin, like somebody killing somebody. somebody meat eating or drinking liquor or gambling or trying to tease other women so those kind of things somebody may consider as a sinful activity for great elevated personalities their definition of sin is if we are not able to remember the lord all the time that's a big sin like i should be remembering the lord all the time and i'm not able to remember the lord i'm such a sinful person so here also the prayer is that i am such a sinful person my heart is like the shoreless ocean of sins please remove all the sinful tendencies haratvam papanam vittim aparam yadava pate o lord of the yadus please remove all the sinful tendencies aho deena nathe nihita charano nischitam idam 
Lord Jagannath bestows his lotus feet upon those who feel themselves fallen. Dina Nath. Lord is the Nath of the Dina. Dina in literal language, literal translation, it will be somebody who is poor. Right? So Lord is Dina Nath. He is the master of the poverty stricken. If we have to translate literally. So what is the Lord just the master of poverty stricken? Somebody beggar on the street. Does Lord give on mercy only to such people who are poverty stricken? He is the master of Dina Nath, somebody in his heart who consider himself as a very fallen that I have no other shelter, only Krishna is my shelter. Poor is somebody, somebody may be rich materially, but poor, spiritually poor, who some consider himself that I am so fallen, I have no inclination towards Krishna, I am only fully dependent on Krishna. So that is Dina. And Krishna is the Nath of those persons who have considered no other shelter but of the Supreme Lord. Aho Dina Nathe Nihita Charano Nishchitam Idam Jagannatha Swami Nayana Pathagami Bhavatume. I offer my obeisances to Lord Jagannath. May Lord Jagannath be the object of my vision. So this is how we should be praying to the Lord. I don't want all these material opulences, material wealth and name and fame and position and association of worldly people. Please remove all the sinful reaction and the tendency to commit sin from my heart. So as what does devotee say? We, we sing a prayer. Sometimes people think that prayer is for Ganesh Ji. They sing Tumeva Mata Chapita Tumeva Tumeva Bandhu Chisakha Tumeva Tumeva Vidya Dravinam Tumeva Tumeva Sarma Mama Deva Deva. People sing that as a glorification of Ganesh Ji also. But actually this verse is in glorification of Krishna. In Pandav Gita this verse comes. This verse is actually spoken by Gandhari. And she sings this verse. Tumeva Mata Chapita Tumeva. Tumeva Bandhu Chasakha Tumeva. Tumeva Vidya Dravinam Tumeva. Tumeva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva. You are my only shelter. You are my father. You are my mother. You are my best friend. Tumeva Bandhu Chasakha Tumeva. You are my well-wisher. You are my wealth. You are my knowledge. Tumeva Vidya Dravinam Tumeva. Tumeva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva. You are everything for me. So when we come to that level, considering Krishna is everything for me and I need to take his shelter only. And that's why the devotee further, what is devotee's mood is? Whatever way you want to keep me, you keep me in that way. Either you keep me in a miserable situation or you keep me happy. In both situations, I am fully dependent on you. Mari be rakhi be jo ichha tomhara. Nitya dasa prati adhikara. You have this full adhikar, right? What is adhikar? So you have this full adhikar. You can do as you like. You can kill me. You can save me. You can keep me in whatever situation you like. And Shiksha, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shiksha Shikam also, the last verse, the eighth verse also, that is kind of exhibiting the mood of Radharani. Radharani is also praying in the same way. I am yours. You can. Either tremble me under your feet or you can embrace me. Whatever you like to do. You do as you like. So this is how we should pray to Krishna. Please remove all these sinful tendencies. So this is the Jagannath Ashkam prayer. And the ninth, the last prayer. What does it say? If somebody sings this Jagannath Ashkam, what happens? Right? That is the Shruti Phal. After every prayer or after every pastime of Krishna, we hear at the end generally it's a Shruti Pal. That if somebody hears this narration, what is the benefit they achieve? So it, here it says, Jagannath Ashtakam Punyam Yaha Pathe Prayataha Shuchi Sarva Papa Vishuddhatma Vishnu Lokam Sagachati So the person who recites this Jagannath Ashtakam, a very Pure Jagannath Ashkam, the eight verses glorifying Lord Jagannath. What happens to him? 
Sarva Papa Vishuddhatma, he becomes cleansed of all the sin. Vishnu Lokam Sagachati, and he proceeds to the abode of Lord Vishnu. Now, when we say abode of Lord Vishnu, it can refer to Galoka Dham also, it can refer to Vishnu Loka also, it can refer to Ayodhya Dham. So, it is based on the, the desire, the tendency of the devotee. Are we looking at Jagannath in the form of Krishna? Are we looking at Jagannath in the form of Vishnu? Or somebody is looking at Jagannath in the form of Lord Ramachandra? Right? So Krishna and Vishnu, word if we see, they are used interchangeably in scripture. Many times you will say, we are singing the player of Tulsi Devi also. The Tulsi Devi Pranam Mantra, what does it say? Vrindaya Tulsi Devaya Priyaya Keshava Secha Vishnu Bhakti Pratidevi Satyavataya Namo Namaha. So in the first line we are saying Vrindaya Tulsi Devaya Priyaya Keshava Secha. She is very dear to Keshava, Krishna. So at, in the beginning, at the end then we say Vishnu Bhakti Pratidevi Satyavataya Namo Namaha. So she grant Bhakti at the feet of Lord Vishnu. So Vishnu is also one of the name of Krishna only. Vishnu is Sarva Vyapa Kiti Vishnu. One who is all pervading that is Vishnu. So Vishnu and Krishna name are interchangeably used. So many times that's why it says Vishnu Loka or Krishna Loka. We should not be very kind of fixed or rigid about that. Oh no, no, it is saying somebody will go to Vishnu Loka. But my goal is to go to Krishna Loka. So maybe I should not sing or I should not say that. Sometimes devotees, they want to change that word. When we say the Tulsi prayer, right? They say, Prindaya Tulsi Deviaya Priyaya Keshava Sicha Krishna Bhakti Prati Devi Satyavate Namana. They say, oh, I want to say Krishna Bhakti. I don't want to say Vishnu Bhakti. We should understand there is no difference in that. Krishna and Vishnu word are interchangeably used. So bottom line is somebody is reciting this Jagannath Ashtakam. What happens? Their heart becomes cleansed of all the sinful tendencies and sinful reaction. And they are eligible to go back to Godhead. To return to the board of Krishna. Kishu Jagannath Ashtakam ki jai. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Mai ki jai. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. Ananta Kodi Vaishnav Rinda ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Okay, so thank you very much for attending.